Stefano. What a pleasure to be with you once more in your living rooms for Excite Home Church. It's been a year since we've done one of these proper, and it's our blessing and it's our privilege and our honor to lead you in worship this morning. So I want to encourage you, even though you're not maybe surrounded by all your Excite Church whānau at the Turner Centre this morning and the, the lights aren't going and we don't have the big stage and stuff, I want to encourage you right now to, in your living room or wherever you are watching this, to get to your feet yeah. right now and let's give our Lord God the best bit of praise this morning. Let's give Him the best for the first day of our week. Come on, whānau. of this world but the weapons of our warfare they're not carnal but they're mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds the smashing of arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God so this morning let's recognize the battlefield we're on and let's raise a standard of worship this morning Oh 
It's come to that time where we get to share in communion together this morning. It's such a blessing and an honor that we're able to do this. So if you haven't got your prawa or your bread and you haven't got your drink, whether it be grape juice, cordial or otherwise, go and grab it right now as we share this together. And I've just got a bit of a thought before we do this. So as we take this communion, the two elements representing the bread, representing the body of Christ, and the drink representing the wine of Christ. It's an opportunity for us to remember what Christ has done and reflect on the significance of it and also take on something spiritually from him. Now, in the book of John, there was a a part there in chapter six where the people were questioning Jesus and going, hey, we just want, we want a sign. Show us a sign about who you are and what's going on. And they, they gave him the example. They said, well, back in the day, our forefathers, they had a sign when Moses 
prayed and they got bread from heaven called manna. And so the manna came down in the night, it fell as dew, and in the morning they went out and collected it when they were in the wilderness. This is the Israelites. And that to them was a sign of God's faithfulness. Uh, this miracle, bread from heaven. Well, Jesus responded to them and he said, well, that wasn't really true bread from heaven. And this is what he said to them. He said in uh, verse 35 of John 6, he says, I am the bread of life. I'm the true bread of heaven, he reckons. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. So what he's talking about there is that Jesus, he's the bread of life, and he is our sustenance. Sustenance in a way that transcends physical sustenance. It transcends physical food, physical water. He's beyond that to us. There's a spiritual sustenance from which everything flows. Jesus just came and did this incredible thing. He came to this earth. He fully fulfilled the law on our behalf. He shed his blood for us and he gave his entire body for us so that we could live in absolute freedom and a new life, new life. So I encourage you this morning as we take these elements together, that if you are believing for healing, whether that be physical, mental or spiritual, then I want to believe with you and you believe as you take on this bread, which represents the body of our Lord, true sustenance, that he is giving life to your flesh, life to your spirit, life to your mind. There's renewal in it. So I just want to pray and then we're going to take these elements together. First the bread, then the drink. First the body, then the blood. So thank you, Father. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for being that atoning sacrifice, for coming and being the full propitiation of our sins. Father, that you came and you bridged the gap between us and, and God. So Jesus, we honor you and we remember you and we take on that spiritual sustenance of your body as we take this bread. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, as we take this drink that represents your blood, the fulfilling of the covenant, we thank you, Father, for shedding it on our behalf. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, church. It's a real blessing to be able to bring this online service to you right in your homes. So we hope you will enjoy it this morning. And I'm sure every one of you are enjoying a bit more freedom. You can get out and about. Children are at school. Homes are a bit quieter. And you can even buy that nice latte that you might have missed during lockdown. And just so you know, we want to really thank you for your giving and financial support to Excite Church. It has been such a blessing. I can tell you that we have been able to bless many families and families with a food parcel, very needy families. Families have so appreciated it. And we just wanna thank you because without your giving, we could never do this. And we just wanna, um, at the moment, if you look on the screen, the account number will come up as well for you. And we just want to say an ongoing thank you so much for this. I really appreciate it very much. And I just want to hand over now to Pastor Paul for an awesome message this morning. Be blessed. Well, kia ora whanau. Good to be together again today to do communion together. How great is that? Feeding upon our Lord Jesus Christ. The bread and the cup, the wine, separate. But when we eat it, together in us. How wonderful. Wow. This month we uh, have a theme, which is the lion's roar. And it reminds me how the lion, the king of kings, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the king of kings and lord of lords, our Lord Jesus Christ. It reminds me of how that he got up on the great, the last day of the feast when he was here. And he cried with a loud voice, if anyone thirst, let him come to me and drink. And so he always loves us to look to him, to feed upon him. I love to start every day praising the Lord. 
thanking the Lord for who he is and what he's done, worshipping our God, entering his gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, entering his courts with praise. What a wonderful day to be able to do that every day. So the Lord is so good to his own. And today I just want to give you a bit of encouragement uh, from uh, the story of Peter. Peter is a, just a great uh, disciple, and I just love Peter in the Bible. And, uh, you know, Peter was called for greatness. And you today have been called by our Lord for greatness. And uh, not only have we been redeemed, but we have, he, he, not only has he redeemed us, but he has a plan for us. He has a purpose for our life. Now, Peter had many ups and downs in his life. You know, there was highs and there was lows. Peter uh, had a great revelation of who Christ was one day. Jesus was asking his disciples, who do people say that he was? And, and then he asked them, who do you say that I am? And Peter had this revelation uh, from God. And uh, he said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. That was a highlight in Peter's life. And another one uh, there was when he got out of the boat, when Jesus came walking on the water in the storm and he walked to Jesus. Another highlight in his life. But there was lows as well. And uh, we have highs and we have lows in life sometimes. Uh, being on lockdown, we didn't really like that. But coming out and being more free on level two, that's a great blessing. And um, Peter, Peter, one stage uh, when Jesus was talking about going to the cross, he uh, rebuked the Lord and um, he said, oh, no, you'll never go and die, Lord. And, uh, but Jesus rebuked him back and said, get behind me, Satan. And, uh, and uh, so there were things that Peter got wrong at times. And, uh, and uh, so there was another time, too, when he took the law into his own hand. This was right before Jesus died on the cross uh, in the Garden of Gethsemane. Peter pulled out his uh, sword. And when, they, when the men came to get him, he, he cut off this uh, servant of the high priest's ear. And uh, Jesus healed that. But he told Peter, look, Peter, put your sword back up. This is not how we're going to do this. And Jesus knew that he called for greatness himself. He knew that he was going to the cross to redeem us. I want to speak about Peter, though, three things in his life, three fires in Peter's life. The first one we read about in uh, John chapter 18, and we can look at that now, verses 25 to 27. And this is just before Jesus was taken to the cross. They brought him to uh, Caiaphas, the high priest. And Peter was at, there at the time. And in verse 25 of John 18, it says, Now Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Therefore they said to him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, a relative of him whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the rooster crowed. Jesus had already told Peter that... Um, he was going to deny him three times before the rooster crowed. And uh, here's the first fire in Peter's life. It's the fire of failure. Here is Peter gathered around with those that uh, uh, didn't like the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was there trying to keep uh, a look on and just see what was happening. He had followed. He was bold enough to follow them. But once people started thinking that he was one of the disciples, he wanted to, he wanted to duck for cover. He even denied Jesus uh, with the curses as well. And so he would have really felt that because what happened when he denied the Lord the third time in the cock crew, it tells us in the other gospels that Jesus looked on him. And I believe that was a look of love. Nothing would change Jesus' heart towards Peter. He knew he had called him for greatness. And, uh, and yet Peter went out and wept bitterly because he felt that he had failed the Lord. And yet Jesus was so forgiving of, of him as well. So the fire of failure. You know, it's peer pressure at times that makes us fail. Peter was there and it was the peer pressure around that fire that he gathered around with, with the enemies of the Lord Jesus. Uh, it was that peer pressure that caused him uh, to fail, I believe. And um, <clears throat> he denied he even knew the Lord. Imagine doing that to his best friend. And, um, but Jesus says to him and says to all of us when we fail, he says, come to me and I'll give you rest. And I believe uh, Jesus had no resentment towards Peter. He really forgave him. And at times in life, we fail. You know, um, as a husband, I've failed. As a father, I've failed. As a worker, I've failed at times in my life. Sometimes I've failed as a manager in my business. 
or as a pastor, or even as a son to my own father. I've failed. There's been many times. But Jesus' look of love is what draws me back to him. I know that no matter what, he'll never forsake me. He's always there for me. And he was for Peter. And so the first fire that we see in Peter's life is the fire of failure. But then we see the fire of fellowship, number two. And we read about that. This place took, uh, this took place uh, a few days later after Jesus rose from the dead. And uh, Jesus was, uh, came down to the shore and there was Peter. He'd gone back to his trade. He was with some of the other disciples. They were fishing and they caught nothing. And uh, so Jesus speaks to them in John 21 and verse 4 to 6. And it says there, when morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, children, have you any food? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. They had a tremendous catch of fish that would have been worth a lot of money. And um, straight away, Peter knew it was the Lord and he, and, and he came to the Lord. But, Peter, but the Lord was on the beach and he had some food there and bread that, and he had made a fire. And he told the disciples to bring some of the food that they had caught, some of the fish. And they sat around this fire. Jesus cooked it up for them. And uh, they had communion with the Lord. And this is the fire of fellowship. That was a better fire for Jesus to, uh, for Peter to be around with the Lord. Having fellowship, having communion with him. Like we've had communion with him this morning. God really wants fellowship with us. The Lord loves fellowship with us. Even the Apostle John said, truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son. And so the, here we see in Peter's life, the fire of fellowship. And it's so important that we keep that fire of fellowship burning between us and the Lord, between us and our Heavenly Father, that every day we walk with him, that we look to him and we trust in him. So around that fire, Jesus asks Peter three times uh, whether he loved him or not. And Peter was a bit perturbed about this. And he said three times that he did. But Jesus told him three times to feed his sheep and feed his lambs. You remember Peter had been called for greatness. You've been called for greatness in your life. God has a plan for you. And there's a calling on your life as you listen to this uh, message as well. So here, here uh, the Lord Jesus is bringing Peter back on the right track. He had, he, had, he had called him to reach out to others and to share the gospel with others. And he never gave up on Peter. And no matter what fires of failure you've been around, Jesus will never give up on you. He wants you to enjoy intimate fellowship with him on a daily basis. So the fire of failure, the fire of fellowship, a great fire, the fire of fellowship. But thirdly, the fire of fulfillment. And this is a few days later again after that Jesus had gone back to heaven. Ten days later, he had told the disciples to wait. And they were waiting there in the upper room. And, they were, and he said he was going to send the Holy Spirit. And this is the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And we'll just read what happened there in, in verse 2 to 4. It says of Acts 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow! Here's the Holy Spirit coming down upon them, and here's the, the divided tongues of fire sitting upon them. And, uh, and, and what a difference that made to Peter. He, Jesus had told them to wait in Jerusalem till they be clothed with power from on high. You know, Peter obeyed the Lord then because he had had the fellowship around that fire of fellowship. And, uh, and, and he had been waiting there with the disciples and he was, his life was transformed once he received the Holy Spirit. Peter was waiting upon God and what a change the Holy Spirit brought to his life. I want to tell you the Holy Spirit is your comforter. He will lead you and guide you. He will clothe you with power from on high. He'll give you the ability, uh, no matter what you go through life, just to be steadfast. He will commune with your spirit and lead you to delight yourself in the Lord and to feed upon his goodness and faithfulness. And so what happened to Peter after this? Peter went out on the day of Pentecost and he started preaching and, and 3,000 people got saved. 
Suddenly, he was an instrument for God to use once he was filled with the Holy Spirit to, to impact the lives of others. And 3,000 not only got saved, they baptized the 3,000 people of all different nations there in Jerusalem. And it, it was a wonderful day, the day of Pentecost. So this is the third fire, the fire of fulfillment. This is what God had called Peter to do. You remember back, way back when Jesus called him and Andrew, when they were... Um, uh, fishing in the boat and Jesus said hey you guys come follow me and I will make you fishers of men this was the great calling upon Peter's life to be a fisher of men and so they left their nets in the boat and they came and followed Jesus but along the way of course we read after the resurrection where Peter went back fishing he went back to his trade because he had been around the fire of failure and sometimes when we're around the fire of failure it tends to make us want to go back to the past. But God says, no, I will be faithful to you. And uh, you can have fellowship with me no matter what you've done. I've already covered it. So Peter was called to be a fisher of men. He did go back fishing. But on the day of Pentecost that we read about in Acts 2, the fire of fulfillment, here is Peter fishing for men. 3,000 souls get saved. What a great blessing. Do you know, my friend? You've been called to be a fisher of men. You've been called to go out there into the community and make a difference. And uh, as we release from lockdown more and more, we have more and more freedom to go out. We just continually rejoice in the Lord and we share his love and grace and light with others around about us. I want to encourage you, continue to uh, follow your calling. You're important. The Lord has called you and he loves you and he's behind you. His Holy Spirit will lead and guide you as you look to the Lord uh, each day. Thank you, Father. Awesome. God is so good to us. Now, I just want to bless you today. And I say the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Have a fantastic week.